upper uh, uh, house or in the upper chamber. And uh, I would like to, uh, to suggest very strongly that uh, the house uh, does a counterpart uh, bill in uh, institutionalizing uh, and ensuring the supplies uh, of uh, personal protective equipment as well as, uh, as other uh, uh, pandemic or uh, epidemic uh, supplies. Uh, to really ramp up the country's uh, capacity to, uh, to mount an effective response uh, against uh, COVID-19. The second one, I think, uh, really needs a very strong push, which is the uh, establishment of a uh, Philippine uh, Center for Disease Control. I understand that uh, uh, Congressman uh, Salceda had uh, made mention of this a uh, few times in some of his interviews. And I'd like uh, to put this, uh, this uh, uh, on the uh, It would be best to really, um, given the uh, COVID, the evolving uh, COVID situation, it is uh, apropos, it is opportune to uh, really, uh, for, for, for uh, Congress, to uh, craft a uh, legislation uh, establishing the Philippine Center for uh, Disease Control. Uh, so these are uh, two things that I thought uh, are worthy of uh, the Congress uh, consideration in uh, crafting uh, meaningful and impactful pieces of legislation. No? So uh, the uh, next that I would like to uh, to uh, uh, bring forth uh, during this hearing is uh, the opportunity to truly recognize our heroes, our kutawagin natin ang mga bayani at uh, ang uh, mga uh, health workers po natin na hindi matutumbasan ng uh, anuman halaga o salapi ang kanilang uh, kabayanihan at ang kanilang uh, walang humpay na pagsasakripisyo sa pangangalaga po ng uh, atin mga COVID uh, patients. And uh, it is for this reason that uh, the DOH has uh, aggressively pushed for uh, the procurement in the face of the global supply, uh, supply chain uh, shortages, uh, the procurement of... Uh, uh, as many or if not as much uh, PPEs for the protection of uh, our uh, health uh, workers uh, who are frontliners in the care of COVID patients. And it is uh, uh, at this point that I'd like to uh, again emphasize that we have successfully gotten uh, almost uh, uh, 900 million uh, complete sets of uh, PPE and uh, we have uh, already uh, distributed this to uh, hospitals that uh, have been caring for uh, COVID patients. And then, of course, it is also for this reason that these uh, healthcare workers, our uh, new uh, 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 modern day heroes, I would say, um, in the evolving COVID uh, situation, that we have prioritized them in uh, the uh, conduct and in the ramping up of our testing uh, capacities. So, napakamahalaga po, uh, siguro pwede natin uh, maintindihan na there are two uh, cornerstones of uh, the national and the local government uh, response to uh, COVID-19. And it is really the ample or adequate supply of uh, PPEs and uh, the ramping up of our uh, testing uh, capacities from one, RITM, the sole uh, uh, testing center uh, using the PCR uh, uh, testing uh, modality. And now we, are, uh, uh, we have 16. And uh, hopefully we will be able to uh, increase this uh, further uh, to as uh, high as about uh, 50 to 60 more testing centers both in the public and the private uh, sectors. And then of course, uh, lastly, is uh, the uh, ramping up also of our uh, 
healthcare uh, uh, workforce. And uh, we are very um, uh, indeed pleased to report to you that uh, we have already begun the hiring through the emergency uh, hiring scheme uh, of, uh, uh, well, the first uh, batch would be about uh, 900 uh, cadres of uh, healthcare workers consisting of doctors, of uh, medical technologies, uh, nurses, uh, etc. And uh, we will need more uh, to be able to uh, effectively mount uh, a, a, a very good uh, response uh, to COVID-19 in, in this uh, country. And all of these are uh, essential uh, components in what I would consider the uh, seven uh, level approach to our national and local uh, anti-COVID uh, response, beginning uh, at uh, the level of uh, surveillance, of uh, isolation, uh, early detection, um, the contact tracing, uh, clinical best practice management of every COVID case, ensuring that uh, uh, they do not uh, deteriorate and die. So it is very important. The challenge here is really uh, to reduce uh, uh, death, uh, to, to improve the uh, period within which the recovery must be uh, achieved among uh, patients. And uh, of course, uh, again, um, we uh, drill down the importance of uh, preventive measures, the uh, non-pharmaceutical uh, public health measures, such as frequent washing of the hands, the uh, cough etiquette, the uh, physical uh, uh, distancing, uh, and of course, uh, measures uh, to improve personal hygiene and uh, measures are uh, equally important in uh, uh, strengthening the uh, resistance, uh, if not the overall health of individuals uh, to be able to uh, mount an effective uh, response uh, at the individual level to COVID-19. Uh, and then, of course, lastly, would be the mitigation uh, measures. Uh, how do we mitigate the impact uh, of uh, COVID-19 in terms of uh, you know, society, in terms of uh, the economy, uh, in terms of even uh, uh, political consideration? So uh, all of these are indeed very important fundamental components uh, of uh, our nation's uh, uh, mounting an effective uh, response to uh, COVID-19. Uh, uh, I don't want to belabor the point. I think uh, most of the important points that have been uh, um, emphasized uh, certainly would bode well for the entire Department of Health. Again, this fountain of knowledge and, uh, and information will enrich uh, the DOH uh, strategy uh, in uh, fighting uh, uh, and putting an end to uh, the scourge of uh, COVID-19 in this country. So again, uh, in behalf of the DOH, I'd like to uh, sincerely uh, convey to you uh, my, uh, my thanks, uh, my appreciation uh, to all of, uh, to, the, uh, to this opportunity uh, that you have invited me and the DOH uh, to participate. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat, Secretary Duque. Uh, we will soon be opening up um, our open forum and uh, we'll be inviting our friends in the media who have been listening intently uh, during the uh, presentations of all our resource speakers. So um, at this uh, point, I'd like to ask the Secretary General to direct um, uh, Dexter and Darren to um, uh, moderate the uh, open forum. Uh, the SG Darren is requested to moderate the question and answer portion. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Secretary. Um, we have a list of reporters who have showed their interest to ask questions to our resource persons and the congressmen who are here. First in the list is Mr. Ryan Pakpako of Peoples Tonight. Ryan. Uh, hello. Go ahead, Ryan. Please um, direct your question at a specific um, 
resource uh, speaker or one of the cluster co-chairs. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, magandang hapon po, speaker. Uh, Alan, Majority Leader Martin, Minority Leader Benny, at sa lahat. My first question is directed to uh, Secretary Duque. Uh, sir, uh, Executive Secretary Miguel Deya announced that uh, President Duterte rejected the uh, Senator's call for you to resign. Uh, was there really a failure of leadership, negligence, or lack of foresight on your part? Inefficiency, inefficiency in the performance of your mandate as alleged by majority of senators. And my second question is for uh, uh, Speaker Alan. Uh, sir, with all the relentless efforts of the House to help uh, government's overall strategy in dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic and its aftermath, what is the House leadership's position on Duke resign call? Thank you, sir. Hey, Mr. Chairman, if I may be allowed to uh, answer. Uh, first of all, uh, the Senate's uh, call for my resignation is uh, their uh, opinion. We respect the, the, their opinion, but uh, this I have to say. Uh, I uh, serve at the pleasure of uh, the president, and for as long as uh, he uh, continues, uh, to put his trust and uh, confidence in my uh, capabilities, uh, I will uh, lead uh, the DOH and the IATF in uh, putting a uh, uh, in 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 uh, 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 putting forward a uh, very effective uh, response against uh, COVID-19 in this country. It's just very unfortunate, and I'm really hurt that it is at this time when the, the Senate is calling for uh, my resignation, when in fact uh, we need to uh, come together because you know, we need to unite. We need to, uh, uh, we have such a uh, formidable um, uh, enemy. This is a war, this is a World War III, uh, and uh, this is against a, uh, an invisible uh, enemy. And uh, how I wish that uh, the Senate had been more, uh, uh, more uh, magnanimous uh, and uh, more appreciative of uh, the efforts that we have uh, tried to put in place from uh, the time that the threat of uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, began in this country. Uh, first, I'd like to say that uh, we were, the, the Philippines was one of the countries that uh, actually uh, imposed an absolute uh, uh, travel ban to, uh, on persons uh, and nationals from uh, China and uh, from the uh, uh, special administrative region. And because of this uh, action, which the president had uh, uh, approved very decisively, had actually caused the country to buy time. And because of that uh, uh, bold action, uh, the entry uh, of the pandemic virus uh, was delayed by a month and no less than the WHO itself had cited the Philippines uh, uh, for being one of the countries that did not report any case of COVID-19 for more than three weeks. And in fact, to be exact, for four weeks. But of course, the science behind uh, restrictions, travel bans or travel restrictions, is that it will only delay the introduction of the pandemic virus by anywhere from one month to two months. So tayo naman po ay isang buwan, ito po ay atin na delay. And then second, of course, is that as uh, the chairman of the IATF, we had uh, worked so hard, uh, all the uh, member agencies of the Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infectious Disease, uh, we gave a very solid recommendation to the president uh, precisely uh, to uh, approve uh, the first, initially, the general community quarantine uh, initiative, uh, but which uh, ostensibly was not effective uh, initially. And thus, uh, the IATF having uh, had to uh, level up uh, from the general community quarantine to the enhanced community quarantine. And this is uh, one of the two uh, definitive uh, uh, decisions or if not actions that uh, somehow 
uh, has uh, made us uh, manage the uh, COVID-19 in the country. Uh, of course, we had to do all of this with such great limitations. Uh, nobody, nobody, but nobody knew that this was going to come. And uh, countries all over the world are struggling, no end, to really uh, resolve this uh, uh, war against COVID-19. And I appeal that given the extreme difficulty that COVID-19 uh, poses uh, to nations and the Philippines uh, being one of them, uh, we need to come together. We need to unite. We need to do our best. We need to appreciate what has one uh, 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 should contribute to uh, put to the table and to help us, you know, succeed in this uh, war. Uh, and so again, I uh, respect the uh, the opinion of the Senate. If that is their judgment uh, of me, uh, then. Uh, I guess uh, uh, it is their every uh, prerogative and every right uh, to, uh, to have this assessment of my performance. But again, I serve at the pleasure uh, of the president. Thank you very much. Uh, speaker, yes, please go ahead. Yes, Ryan, thank you for your question. Uh, my personal opinion is I'm not joining the call of the senators for the secretary's resignation. Uh, I have not um, consulted or there's been no uh, consensus with members of House because this is a uh, recent development. But I'd like to say that precisely we need a new mindset during these times. If this was a normal hearing, there would be a lot of interventions and a lot of confrontation and it'll be a little bit more toxic, which is okay, because the nature of our democracy is that the executive and legislative, while depending on each other, are also a check and balance. And kayo sa media, check and balance din kayo. But as you've been asking very productive questions, even sa economic uh, cluster, you could have been uh, uh, more toxic or you could, the, the house media natin could have asked uh, very sharp questions, but Kitang kita namin yung intent nyo is how to bring the country together and how to solve this problem. So uh, allow me to avoid right now going to the headlines and really more looking for solutions. No? So that's precisely why we're having these hearings um, so that we can uh, get direct information. I, I did call uh, Secretary Duque, if you remember, Sec, uh, I think that was uh, 10 days ago. And I was asking him, Sec, is this a financial problem, meaning kulang ba sa pera? Is it a logistical problem, meaning uh, yung mahirap badalin? I was referring to PPEs, for example, no, or medical equipment. Um, is it a, uh, a supply problem? And uh, dunya niya yung pagpupunta sa China. Um, or is it, uh, what, what else na, na problema? So actually, the attitude of the House now is more of magkaroon ng ganitong classing discussions and to get everyone together. By the nature lang ng mga doktor, and correct me if I'm wrong, doktors, um, collaborative ang mga doktor, eh. hindi sila confrontational. No? Kung panay abogado ang bisita natin ngayon, eh, mabibilang mo na sino yung nagsasabing tama, mali, resign, don't resign, etc. No? But you see that the doctors took good care and I assume they have some differing opinion. So let me go back to my question kanina, and maybe I may suggest, Secretary, that we can do it offline, that uh, if you can assign people and we can have a technical working group off, uh, off the air, no? Because, uh, for example, no, this is one, uh, one computation given to me as far as PPEs, no? Uh, again, this is from one expert, no? So if you see the numbers that I posted in the screen, it's very different from what your good news uh, said. No? And I've been also discussing this with uh, uh, our chief implementer, uh, former AFP chief of staff, and who's doing a great job, uh, Secretary uh, Galvez. No? So, and I know there are thousands of these computations outside. I think my sister, Senator Pia, had a computation of 
uh, something like 10 or 12 million PPEs. And I know there's a difference between a full set and when you talk about masks and everything. So Ryan, to go back to your question, uh, tingin ko yung mga issues ang kailangan linawin. Uh, madali, madali talaga ngayon to say na resign ito, ito may kasalanan. Um, I, I don't know right now. I'm not in a position to judge the performance of the secretary because we're still in the middle of asking questions. But I can tell you, he's been answering my phone calls. He's been uh, answering the questions that I have. And I'm confident after today and when we have another hearing on health next week, some of the questions of uh, Congresswoman and former Secretary Garin and of our chair of the Committee on Health, uh, uh, Helen Tan, will, will, will actually be uh, answered. No. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Darren, uh, who is uh, the next uh, media uh, question? Next, um, we have uh, Ms. Sian Arcangel. Sian? Yes, hi, good afternoon po, uh, CN Arcangel from CNN Philippines. I would just like to ask uh, Secretary Duque about uh, his reaction to the Chinese uh, experts, medical experts' uh, findings or opinion that the Philippines is at risk of being unable to cut off the source of COVID-19 despite the implementation of the enhanced community quarantine. Uh, Sec, what is your uh, reaction to that? Well, I have to look at the report uh, of the uh, Chinese uh, experts uh, whom we invited uh, and they arrived uh, two weeks ago and they have made an assessment uh, at the different levels of uh, our approach to the anti-COVID uh, response. So I uh, will have to look uh, more closely into the totality of the uh, report. Thank you. Um, and also, uh, Secretary Duque, another follow-up. Uh, the Philippines continues to uh, have a high number of uh, medical practitioners po na uh, namamatay, mga frontline workers na namamatay uh, fighting this uh, COVID uh, uh, pandemic. Sir, um, what, what's your strategy po, sir, to uh, reduce the number of deaths of uh, healthcare frontliners? Secretary, nakamute po yung mic ninyo. Yeah, so, sorry. Uh, there, uh, we, we have uh, uh, several factors that we, we found out. Uh, one is uh, some patients who had uh, deteriorated. Uh, they did not disclose uh, their uh, history of uh, travel, history of exposure, and that really uh, put at risk uh, some of our health uh, care workers and doctors in particular, uh, it is uh, a big number of uh, doctors uh, lamentably and, and uh, regrettably uh, who have uh, 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 passed on, uh, died. And uh, it, it hurts uh, me and I know it hurts uh, every one of us uh, to have to deal with this. But uh, one of the uh, factors too is uh, the uh, PPEs that we were struggling uh, to import, uh, especially in the initial uh, phase uh, of this uh, COVID-19. Uh, and so, uh, uh, of course, uh, now we have uh, been able to finally import, uh, although not uh, enough for the long term, but at least uh, this is really a manifestation of uh, our uh, prioritizing uh, our healthcare workers, giving them uh, ample uh, 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 safety um, uh, through this uh, protective uh, uh, personal uh, equipment. So we continue to ramp up. Uh, I'm glad that the speaker uh, uh, Cayetano has uh, asked this question of, uh, really what is the projection uh, of the required PPEs uh, for the medium and long term 
uh, response to uh, COVID-19. So, yan lang po ang masasabi ko sa ngayon at uh, sana hindi ma- magawa pa natin ng paraan uh, yung proper uh, disclosures ng mga pasyente na para hindi po malagay sa uh, alanganin ang atin po mga healthcare workers, lalong-lalo na po ang mga doktor. Thank you po, Sek. Okay uh, na po. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, yes. I'd just like to add kay si Ian kasi that was a very, very good question. Of course, yung frontliners, aside from yung medical practitioners, of course, yung mga police natin, mga tanod. And I'd just like to say, while it is a very valid question, good question kay Secretary, I think it should be addressed to all of us. Eh. Diba? Stay home. Yung mga may sakit, mag-isolate. Yung kailangan magpagamot. Uh, yung mga LGUs, may number, may mga ambulansya, most of them. So it's really something that we can solve together as a community. Um, it's so toxic outside. If you remember, I talked about all 18 million uh, families sa informal sector should get something. So even sa Facebook, may kumakalat that uh, kami sa Congress, specifically ako said that every single Filipino will get something, which is uh, so different sa pinasa natin sa um, uh, um, Bayanian, we heal as one. But definitely for the middle class and uh, micro, small, medium enterprise, um, meron talaga. No? So that's what I'm, I'm saying. No? It's so toxic. But questions like that are, are questions that we should address to everyone. So sa lahat ng nakikinig sa atin uh, ngayon, uh, believe us, you staying at home and, find, and, and following the protocols will help save not only your life, but the life of the frontliners. And then lastly, si Yan, siguro the least we can do is wag magkaroon ng discrimination. Kaya ako natanong yung uh, mental health kanina kasi, you know, ma- makikita mo eh, to pag frontliner tapos pag lumapit sa'yo, there's, syempre lahat naman tayo nagahalo yung feelings eh, di ba? Fear, frustration, um, uncertainty, lahat tayo nagtatanong uh, sino kayang nakakahawa, paano kung nahawa ko, what, what, if that happens, will I be alone? Will will someone accompany me? So we're all going through this. Eh. So y- yun sana, ang, I hope you don't mind na dinagdag ko lang sa tanong mo. But I think all of us can do something uh, para yung frontliners po, mabawasan po ang tinatamaan at uh, mga matay. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you, Paul. Salamat po, Speaker. Uh, Darren, the uh, next um, uh, question. Thank you, Chair. Next is uh, Ms. Mara Cepeda of Rappler. Mara, go ahead. Uh, good afternoon. My question is addressed to Sec Duque. Sir, uh, earlier in the in the meeting, Doc Susan actually suggested that our enhanced community quarantine um, cannot stay um, uh, forever. Uh, she So there are a lot of different sectors that will be affected. Children will be pushed into malnutrition, lack of access to water. How likely are we going to lift um, the enhanced community quarantine in Luzon and What's the likelihood that we will have a modified ECQ? Na pag-uusapan na po ba ito? And uh, what are the possible guidelines or possible um, uh, scenarios na makikita natin after April 30? Well, uh, we continue to do a risk assessment. Uh, we continue to be guided by uh, third-party uh, independent uh, modeling uh, groups. Uh, who made uh, projections uh, based on the doubling time uh, of the uh, COVID in uh, uh, several places, NCR uh, being uh, the priority uh, uh, area. Uh, so uh, I, uh, I believe that uh, the data that will come uh, between now and uh, what's today, uh, Thursday, probably early next week, might uh, be able to uh, give us a, uh, a more uh, definitive um, um, recommendation uh, for the consideration of the uh, president. So uh, we have the, uh, the UP Ateneo, the AIM, the PEDS, the PCHRD, and the DOS, DOST. Uh, these are groups. Uh, and- and the NADA, by the way, the, uh, they have been uh, quite supportive uh, and, and they continue to guide us uh, as to what uh, options uh, to take uh, in terms of uh, the 
ECQ, whether is it going to be a full uh, lifting of the ECQ or a partial lifting or a contraction. Uh, so uh, all these options uh, will be uh, presented to us by the uh, expert uh, panel. But right now, it's very difficult to say what's going to happen uh, after uh, April 30, um, uh, bearing in mind that uh, we still have to uh, look at the data, uh, given the fact that uh, there is now a ramp up uh, testing uh, capacity uh, by our uh, RITM and the sub-national uh, laboratories. Okay. Uh, sec, uh, just one more question from me. Uh, last week, um, there have been reports about uh, the rise of unclaimed bodies in hospitals, and this is primarily because um, the hospitals boards uh, morgues do not have enough uh, freezers to restore the remains. So, sir, uh, we understand that sabi na po ang DOH ng mga possible uh, response to this. Uh, but as of April 16, sir, how do we make sure that there will no longer be issues of unclaimed bodies of COVID-19 patients? Um, how are we going to assist uh, hospitals, both public and private, and even LGUs to take care of the cremation process? Uh, the report uh, as to the uh, dead bodies, I, I have the data, but uh, I just didn't bring it. I'll give it to you uh, to be more exact about a particular uh, hospital. I think you're referring to the East Avenue Medical Center. Yes. And I have a running balance uh, of uh, uh, these numbers, and I can give it to you. But suffice it to say that uh, this was uh, blown out uh, of proportion. Uh, it's true that the East Avenue Medical Center uh, mortuary or the morgue can only accommodate five uh, uh, bodies, uh, but uh, because of uh, the deaths uh, that uh, transpired uh, from April 6 to about the end of uh, Holy Week, <clears throat> I think uh, uh, the, the numbers... Uh, which I will uh, uh, present to you, uh, did, uh, uh, there were some bodies that had to eventually be put together side by side on stretchers, not, not as if they were uh, projected the image, conjured the image of one body piling on uh, one on top of the other. So that's just not true. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mara. Uh, aside from the reporters, we also invited some bloggers. We have one right here, Attorney Darwin Cañete. I believe he has a few questions. Darwin? One five six four, which is the solicitation permit law, which uh, requires that... Uh, Anybody or, or any organization which conducts any form of solicitation uh, must first require must, must first secure a permit from the SWD. Now this has uh, made cer certain of my uh, other friends who are bloggers apprehensive because they are uh, also soliciting online to donate like PPEs, masks, etc. Maybe Congress can help in providing an exception in times of calamity for you know this is a bureaucratic requirement which maybe. Uh, hopefully address because uh, it, it, it makes them hesitant to, to conduct any kind of solicitation drive for PPEs, masks, because they require uh, uh, DSWD permit. Hello? Uh, th thank you very much, Darwin, for that question. Actually, classmate ko sa law school si Darwin and since law school nagsosolicit ako sa kanila na walang permit. Eh. So I know, <laughs> I, I, I know what you're... I know what you're feeling and talking about. I can talk uh, for the DSWD this point. We will communicate your point. I've been reading it uh, all over Facebook. But I think it was a reaction dun sa mga uh, nagte-take advantage ng situation at nagsosolicit pero hindi naman talaga binibigay uh, sa, sa mga nangangailangan or meaning uh, scam, scam ulit, di ba? But uh, yes. I, I think 90, 99% naman ngayon uh, very and especially if you do it to Facebook, uh, nero report nga eh. So like the 50 million that we raised also sa Congress, uh, sa swell to ng mga members of Congress, 
we're going to post uh, where every single centavo went. No, so de definitely, uh, I, I will, uh, no, I will communicate that. And uh, I think even tonight, kapag ka nag uh, briefing ang IATF, uh, sec Duque, baka you can also communicate to the other secretaries. Uh, but yung impression ko when I read BBSWD was really it's just a warning to people na uh, wag mang loko during this time. But definitely, if we require uh, paperwork at this point in time, eh magkaka stand still yung mga maliliit na tulong na actually pag pinagsama sama mo talagang nakakatulong. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, I am uh, a speaker, Kaitana, sorry. <laughs> Darren, who's next? Um, Mr. Chair, we have a number of reporters who are tuned in right now on our Facebook Live but could not join the Zoom um, for technical reasons. Um, may I read some of the questions, sir? Yes, by all means, go ahead. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, thank you, sir. First is from Mr. Billy Begas of Bandera. Um, ang tanong po niya, bakit hanggang ngayon wala pa ring mabiling surgical or N95 masks sa mga medical supply stores para sa mga ordinaryong tao. Pag natapos ang ECQ sa April 30, marami ng tao ang lalabas at mga ilangan ng mask. At sapat na ba ang supply ng mga PPE sa mga ospital? That is the question of Mr. Billy Begas of Bandera. Uh, yung pong uh, mga PPEs para sa mga ospital, as of now, sapat po. In fact, of the 900,000 uh, complete PPEs, about uh, 82 80 to 100,000 uh, PPEs have been distributed, I believe, uh, beginning April uh, 6. So, uh, meron po tayong darating na another batch of 230, 220, 230,000 PPEs. Yung alam, problema po natin, hindi po natin matransport lahat dahil po sa kakulangan ng uh, mga eroplano uh, na may kakayahan magdala ng uh, malaking bilang ng PPEs. Kaya yung ating pong C-130 pabalik-balik, uh, Sinubukan po ng OCD na uh, mangup ma mangupahan ng, uh, ng uh, aeroplano o cargo planes. No? Pero aalamin ko pa kung naging uh, matagumpay ba yung kanilang negosasyon. Uh, pero ganun din yung sa barko, tinitignan na rin nila para lang talagang uh, maipasok ang, uh, ang lahat ng ating pong, uh, nabiling uh, PPEs mula sa China. At uh, doon po naman sa pangalawang aspeto ng inyong tanong ay uh, kung may sapat ba na uh, N95 uh, mask para sa taong bayan, ang sabit po dyan ay uh, kulang na kulang po. At hindi po N95 ang kinakailangan para po sa, uh, uh, para po sa ating mga kababayan kung hindi po yung N88, yung parang surgical mask. Pero ganun pa man ay ang uh, interagency task force ay uh, nagpasya uh, uh, na uh, gumamit ng mga mask, uh, pa pati yung do-it-yourself mask, kung ano ng mga uh, mask na pwede ninyong uh, gamitin o malikha ay uh, better, uh, uh, better something than nothing. So uh, ganun na lang po ang masasabi natin sa ngayon hanggat, hanggat uh, hindi po kaya nga uh, ma-supplyan ng atin pong uh, mga manufacturing companies ang uh, sapat na bilang ng uh, uh, na tamang uh, mask para sa kababayan natin ay eh, uh, mag-aantay-antay pa po tayo ng konting panahon. Thank you so much, uh, Secretary Duke. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Yeah, just to follow up on that, sec, um, si Dr. Brian Cabral, who by the way saved the life of our colleague, uh, Congressman and Chairman ng uh, CA, uh, Congressman Samora. No? Uh, about a week or two weeks ago, he texted me nga and he was asking, uh, while other countries are now requiring uh, their local industries to produce uh, more PPEs, uh, because nagkakaubusan nga at nagkakaagawan. No? In, in fact, di ba, nag ang US at Germany and other European countries. So, uh, I know that uh, Sec Dominguez reported that the alcohol, uh, uh, the, the businesses that uh, produce uh, alcoholic drinks have shifted also into producing uh, alcohol. Um, so what, what about po sa mask and everything? Can we ramp that up and we, can we ask local um, uh, businesses to do that? And 
I know for a fact DOST is using their 3D printers uh, to help produce, uh, but mukang from donations then. So maybe we can allot some resources uh, to getting more 3D printers and providing them the, the material. It might not be, I know this is the health cluster sec, so uh, whatever hindi para sa na tanong, please just pass it on to the IATF. Thank you, Speaker. Um, uh, at this point, we'd like to uh, call upon um, uh, Co-Chair Janet Garin. Janet, you'd Thank like to, you. yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, Sek Pinkoy, um, let me allow me to take off from the question of the speaker. Napaka-importante kasi mapag-usapan yung tanong niya. No, he mentioned about the need for PPEs and apparently, dahil nga pandemic ito, iba-iba yung binibigay na figure. So, there's a probability that the figure that DOH is pointing at is only for those moderate or severe cases. Um, hindi pa kasama yung private sector dito. Now, yung marami rin po kasi ang nangangailangan for the PUIs and the suspected or the probable cases. Will it be possible para ma-iron out ito for the DOH to assign a DOH official who can work with the TWG and come up with this so that the leadership and we have the chairman of the appropriation and the majority leader can actually immediately look for sources of funding na alam sinabi mo, mahirap binhin, mahirap panapin, Eh kung kailangan i-produce, tapos doon pa tayo maghanap ng pambili. Um, it's, it's actually a very important matter that can actually push the speaker in terms of decision making. So will that be possible? Uh, yes, ma'am. That certainly will be possible. As I have said earlier, the supply of PPEs uh, is uh, crucial. It's a one of the cornerstones of our uh, COVID uh, response. And uh, we would be very glad to assign uh, a uh, senior official of uh, the DOH. I think Yusek uh, Tong An, uh, I believe, is on top of this, plus a technical guy who have prepared uh, the PPEs that uh, we need uh, during this uh, COVID uh, uh, period. And so uh, uh, certainly we will uh, inform you right away the name of the person we will send uh, to, uh, to, to the house. Yeah, maraming salamat po din. Um, allow me to also expand on the issue ng mga reagents, test kits, the consumables that the laboratory needs. Kasi I'm going over the prices being told to me by our colleagues abroad, specifically in Singapore, in Japan, in Korea, and in China. And the Philippines apparently are being given different pricing. Parang mas mahal yung kuha natin. So um, this can also be worked out within the TWG to, uh, you'll be eating two birds with one stone. The actual estimate of the needs of the laboratories, aside from the PPEs, so that the so that Congress and the Speaker and the Majority Leader and the upper chair can prepare the corresponding funding kung kailangan. But at the same time, we will also be aware of procuring it at what price. Kasi kung aabusuhin din yung presyo, mahirap din. So it's good to align. And allow me also Nakama to take... Yeah, thank you, Secretary. The speaker was very um, persistent on the issue on frontliners. Kasi parang nasaktan ang sambayan ng Pilipino nung lumabas ang international report na tila sa Pilipinas tayo ang isa sa pinakamaraming frontliners, especially doctors and healthcare workers who are dying because of COVID. I believe the fear of everybody comes from the fact that many health workers, especially those handling patients, are not assured of a PCR test in the DOH COVID laboratory. So para pumalinawan ang lahat, I, I know that the protocol is uh, frontliners, especially health workers, are tested every three weeks. Where are we at this proposal? Well, in our guidelines, it is uh, very clear that uh, among the uh, priorities for testing uh, would uh, clearly stand out our uh, healthcare workers, precisely because we need to give them more protection, uh, uh, adequate uh, PPEs, and uh, making sure that uh, after they take care of a COVID uh, patient, especially in the critical care units, 
uh, that uh, after seven days of uh, uh, of immersion, uh, afterwards they of course they're supplied with uh, daily uh, PPEs, but afterwards they are made to undergo quarantine for two weeks. So nagluluto ipu sila. So at the same time, we ensure uh, again the uh, adequacy of uh, PPEs. Level four PPEs, because there are a lot of risk-based classes. Eh. There are uh, uh, eight components, there are six, there are five, depending on uh, the risk uh, that is uh, uh, that that the uh, healthcare worker uh, is in. So, sa pinko ilinawin lang po natin yung pung humaharap sa direct ang moderate and severe COVID patients will be tested every three weeks. And this should be cascaded to the regional directors. Yun naman po mga MHOs, municipal health officers, city health officers, yung mga medical technologists na nagsuswab, again, will also be included among those in, who will be tested in the DOH COVID labs. Claro po yun. Uh, yes, uh, yes, Congresswoman. Yes, certainly. I uh, confirm that. Lastly, Secretary, ang tanong nga kanina, bakit marami yung frontliners na naahawa? Sa pagkakaintindi ko, kasi dahil nga mga kakilala natin at kaibigan yung iba, nagkakaroon ng probability ng paghahawaan during dining. So as far as I am concerned, the other countries has already imposed a no eating together policy inside hospitals among health workers and among frontliners. Um, baka po ito, magpadala rin po kayo. This will be part of the discussion with the TWG para kung kinakailangan po, eh, kunyari yung iba, wala namang nagpre-prepare ng pagkain nila, is um, this will also be an issue that the TWG and Congress will look into. Kasi mahirap pong magtrabaho na walang laman ang tiyan, pero mahirap naman na kumakain sila dahil gutom sila, but eating will actually mean being infected with COVID. So if you will be amenable to that area, and I believe the leadership, the majority leader, speaker, and the upper chair can also help on this aspect. Uh, yes, uh, Congresswoman, certainly uh, we will uh, uh, send our uh, technical people to uh, help out in uh, addressing the issues that you have raised. Uh, so, uh, yung sa pagkain ho, medyo hindi ko kabisado. Basta ang alam ko lang ho ay yung social distancing. Pati naman sa mga ospital, sa mga uh, cafeteria, sa mga lugar, dapat siguro talagang uh, na i, uh, sasakatuparan po ang tamang uh, social distancing. Among uh, the other uh, interventions. Thank you, Secretary. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you so much, um, Co-Chair. Thank you, Secretary. Karen? Oh, yes, oh, Chair. Madam Chair, Helen, please. Yes, sir. Uh, to Secretary Duque, po, in relation to the question of our Co-Chair, uh, Janet Garin, on testing, um, we have this expert express uh, cartridge uh, using the gene expert machine. And I believe na meron po tayong um, grant from Global Fund and ADB, which is, I think, uh, 185 uh, tests. No? Considering that we have like 488 gene expert machines in the Philippines, ano po ang uh, action ng DOH dito? Kasi when I inquired with uh, the regional office on the requirement po, no? on using the gene expert. Um, very uh, strict and uh, tedious yung process doon po sa accreditation. I think same with our ITM doon sa P uh, RT-PCR. And uh, yung, um, I'm sure you're aware that this is the quickest and uh, I, I think uh, cheapest, no? Based doon sa estimate nila around 1,200 pesos lang and 15 min, uh, 45 minutes, malalaman mo na yung resulta. So ano po ang plano ng Department of Health? Because it can actually augment the mass testing. Uh, meron po tayong darating na COVID-19 cartridges uh, for use uh, uh, with the gene expert uh, machines. Tama po kayo, ito uh, actually game changer ito. Eh. It's really going to significantly wrap up our testing capacity. And why do I say that? 
you're right, we have more than 400 uh, gene expert machines. Although of the 400, uh, I was uh, informed that only 30 are uh, housed in a biosafety uh, cabinet. Uh, so we have to invest in additional biosafety uh, cabinets where the machines are to operate. Uh, we have uh, uh, 30 uh, with 30 biosafety cabinets, and I uh, was also informed that that they can actually put inside that cabinet four gene expert machines. So that's uh, about a total of about 120 per day testing capacity. And if it is uh, at 46 uh, tests uh, per uh, per day. Uh, and if you just multiply this by uh, 120, you're going to get about 5,000 tests a day. And that's really going to be very significant, very uh, substantial uh, increase in our testing uh, capacity. So maganda po ito. Pero yung alam ko, ma'am, ma 3,000 lang ang darating. Yun ang masakit dito na uh, test. Uh, of the 160, 185,000 cartridges uh, that would be uh, that we have ordered through the PBSP, the Philippine Business for Social Progress, ADB, and the uh, uh, DOH own procurement. So the, this is, again, an indication of how acute the need is for gene expert machines and other testing uh, uh, kits no? by, by the world at large, especially in uh, uh, countries where there is really uh, an exponential uh, increase in uh, in COVID cases. So ito hong uh, 3,000 per week, parating pala ho ito, uh, ang gagawin po natin. So we're, we're uh, constantly uh, uh, getting uh, in touch with them because we really need more and that's going to help us a great deal. Thank you, sir. Uh, I hope lang po the DOH will review the uh, self assessment tool no currently kasi aside from doon sa biosafety level 2 cabinets na nire-require po ninyo napakarami po doon nakalista na requirement which i think we can maximize this opportunity to help um make the test accessible to the community so ilapit po natin ang test and i think this yun nga po game changer as what you said earlier uh, this one, no? so I hope po tingnan din uh, ng uh, department yung inyo pong mga requirements kung pwede nating itweak. I think uh, napag-usapan po namin ito ni Co-Chair uh, Janet Garin. Kung kaya nating tulungan other facilities to comply uh, to make it operational. no? Like, uh, for example, I asked my region, uh, unfortunately... Yes, uh, okay. yes. Unfortunately, uh, wala kaming uh, RT-PCR uh, within Quezon. So pupunta po kami ng Cavite that's still far. But we have biosafety level 2 hospitals that has gene expert that uh, uh, government, I think, and the private hospital that uh, DOH can help. So yun lang, sir. Next concern, Mr. Chair, siguro erase ko lang based doon sa amin pong uh, recommendations um, the cluster's recommendation is uh, we have he here with us the former secretaries. No, we've recommended actually the creation of a war council. No, which with war council, sir, which we, uh, I think the intention is to really help uh, the department on their response to this uh, crisis. No. And um, this will be composed of the unpusa proposal of the members of academia, our members of uh, societies from uh, pulmonology and infectious disease, and the former secretaries, a representative from local government units. Uh, gusto ko pong malaman, naming malaman, sir, what's your take on that if you're open to that? Kasi if, uh, if you're open on the creation of the War Council, then probably we, the, the committee can uh, host a meeting, a dialogue, or we'll sit down with uh, you and discuss what are the problems at uh, recommendations of uh, our uh, stakeholders. Uh, Congresswoman, certainly uh, the DOH uh, welcomes the uh, initiative. 
uh, if we could just be uh, provided a concept uh, paper on the matter so that uh, we can prepare uh, should you call for us to attend a meeting uh, to uh, look into this, at least we will have some uh, uh, very important inputs uh, insofar as this initiative is concerned. War Council, as you said. Yes, uh, yes. yes ma'am. So you, you, ma you, you, yung po ma'am, ma yung sinabi ninyo na we are currently actually reviewing yung self-assessment tool na mga laboratories and uh, we must incorporate, I believe, the uh, laboratories with the gene expert uh, capability, ma'am. Thank so, you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Secretary. Darren, the next question, please. Uh, as I mentioned, we have some bloggers here with us in the Zoom meeting. Um, Mr. Mark Lopez. Go ahead. Floor. Mark? Uh, sec uh, Speaker Alan Cayetano for inviting us here and also the Chair, uh, Martin Romualdez. Thank you. I'd like to direct this question po kay Secretary Duque regarding that policy announcement po uh, about spraying and disinfecting which uh, really caused confusion uh, when it was announced. Uh, Secretary, ano po ba talaga ang stand ng DOH regarding this? Kasi marami rin ho ang naapektuhan dito, especially yung mga institutions like hospitals, uh, yung mga terminals, mga ports uh, natin, seaports, airports, and um, even yung sa mga LGUs that uh, have been conducting itong surface uh, spraying and disinfecting. Uh, medyo nagkaroon po ng ano dito, nalito po ang taong bayan dito eh. Umingi po ako ng paumanhin sa ngala ng DOH uh, dahil po sa kalituhan na inyo pong nabanggit. Pero malinaw po yung ating guidelines na ang uh, ating pong mariin na uh, uh, pinagbabawal ay yung uh, direktamente pag-spray, uh, uh, misting or spray sa mga tao mismo. Dahil nagkaroon na po ng mga resulta, yung mga pag-aaral uh, ng mga uh, spesyalista na ito po ay uh, nagiging sanhi ng mga skin uh, irritation, skin lesions, ay uh, nakaka po sa mata at uh, sa baga uh, na kapag uh, uh, it can uh, uh, cause uh, asthmatic attacks no? and uh, even uh, uh, those with uh, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, no? yung mga emphysema, ay uh, talagang marami na pong mga reklamo na uh, na uh, nadating sa mga uh, doktor patungkol po dito at uh, pero yung pong pag-spray naman sa inanimate objects no sa mga lamesa kung saan-saan ay wala naman po uh, uh, hindi naman po ito delikado uh, sa mga tao ngunit ganun pa man ang uh, nirerekomenda po ng inyong DOH ay yung surface uh, wiping uh, with uh, the disinfectants, no? At uh, yun naman pong uh, uh, spraying at saka misting, pwede lang po yun sa tao kung naka-PPE, naka-complete uh, personal protective equipment po, uh, katulad ng mga nakikita po natin sa mga ospital. So dyan po, pwede yan. Pero pagka yung wala naman pong uh, PPEs, ay hindi po pwede nga uh, isprayan. Uh, pangatlo po, ang nakakatakot po sa pag-spray uh, or misting ay yung uh, potential for aerosolizing. Aerosolizing. Uh, pwedeng yung taong uh, may, hindi natin masabi, no? may dalang mikrobyo o may dalang COVID virus, ay eh, uh, biglang na umo o biglang na uh, na-achie. Uh, pero dahil nga may misting, pwedeng uh, umikot-ikot yung virus at uh, yung susunod na tao ay eh, pwedeng malanghap niya at magkakasakit din siya. So, yan po. Ang, meron po kami bibigay po sa inyong uh, pinakabagong guidelines patungkol dito. Okay. Maraming salamat po. So, ang talagang ano lang po is that it's not really the spraying or disinfecting itself uh, which is a problem but there should really be guidelines, uh, strict guidelines and protocols that should be observed and including po siguro using the right chemicals. Ah, yeah, tama naman po kayo. Kailangan may FDA approval yung po mga disinfectants. No? Uh, pero hindi ko lang po masabi 
very, marami po mga detalye yan, ha? hindi hindi ko po memoryado, pero yung guidelines na lang po ang gagabay sa atin. Okay. Salamat po, salamat po. Salamat, Mark. Uh, Diane, who's next? Uh, we have a phone-in question from inquire.net. Mr. Neil Mercado asks, any updates sa meeting on 2021 national budget, especially with COVID-19 in consideration? Kaya pa ba ng 4.6 trillion spending for 2021? O mababawasan po ba ito? Kung itutuloy naman po ito, saan kukunin ang pondo? Thank you. Uh, okay. Ang focus pa ng uh, Committee on Appropriations at ni Deputy Speaker El Rey is the uh, money needed sa Bayanihan to heal as one, which is being sourced off budget sa GOCC, and then sa 2019 and 2020 budget. Uh, hindi pa malalim ang usapan sa 2021 budget. Preparations pa lang. And as uh, Chairman Joey Salcedo was saying, ang dami kasing variable. But we decided uh, because successful yung uh, huli pong uh, cluster meeting on uh, economic stimulus, to invite uh, Governor Ben Diokno and uh, Secretary Dominguez uh, to a uh, another technical working group like this next Tuesday. So, siguro by by then uh, we'll have some uh, some updates. But the rush really now is uh, how to uh, funded na po yung 200 B na yung pong uh, 18 million na Filipino families sa informal sector, but yung 6.6 .6 million. At saka yung tinatawag pong gaps, no? while we were talking now, uh, both Secretary Dar and uh, uh, Chairman Martin Berga ng um, uh, Chairman ng Agri Committee was calling and saying uh, that they need 15 billion uh, urgently for a program for the farmers and fisher folk. No? So ongoing ito, no? and we're trying our best to work with the executive, san isosource, sana hanapin ito. No? So let us update, allow us to update you next uh, Tuesday. Thank you so much, Speaker, for your uh, for your answer. Next one, Darren. From Elson Kismorio of Manila Bulletin and Tempo. Phone in questions for DOH. What is the real score on China test kits? DOH says they're on par with WHO standards, but many countries like Netherlands. Spain, Turkey have rejected them for being substandard slash unreliable. Thank you. Uh, dalawa pong klase ng uh, testing uh, systems ang <coughs> pinag-uusapan po natin. Uh, yung pong mga nabalitaan natin na binalik ng mga bansa katulad ng Spain, uh, Turkey, ito po yung gamit nila antibody uh, uh, testing kits. Ito yung mga rapid diagnostic uh, test kits. Lateral flow, kung tawagin nila, IgM, IgG antibodies. Uh, yun naman pong uh, isang uh, klase ng uh, testing uh, modality, ito po yung uh, PCR-based. Ito po tawag uh, reverse uh, transcription uh, polymerase chain reaction. Pasensya na po, very technical. Pero ito po yung uh, na-donate ng uh, gobyerno ng China sa atin na patapos pong uh, suriin ng RITM ay sinabi po ng RITM na ito po maganda at ayon sa standards uh, ng WHO at uh, asing, uh, asing uh, uh, parehong quality ng mga dinudonate din ng uh, WHO sa Pilipinas noong mga unang uh, linggo ng uh, uh, COVID uh, pandemic uh, na na, na nangyayari uh, kaya nakapaghanda naman tayo pero nagpapasalamat ako na dahil uh, sa donasyon ng China ay uh, nakatulong po ito sa ating kakayahan sumuri ng mga specimen mula sa ilong at saka sa lalamunan um, She has a second question sir why do you think the Philippines has been ranked least safe out of 20 nations in the Asia-Pacific in the COVID-19 pandemic? Ranking was made by Hong Kong-based venture capital firm Deep Knowledge Ventures, which rated countries like Indonesia and Bangladesh higher than the Philippines. Thank you. Well, again, I cannot comment because I have to look into the report. I will have to uh, validate the uh, parameters or the criteria uh, that they used 
to uh, uh, generate uh, such a uh, report because for all we know, they might be using an uh, uh, old uh, de de data. So I would want to look into this uh, more closely. Thank you, sir. From Delon Porsalia of Phil Philippine Star, his question, do you support the deployment ban of health workers, even for those who, who already have their own families abroad? Thank you. Uh, the IATF uh, had uh, issued a resolution for a uh, for uh, allowing uh, OFWs or health uh, care workers with uh, active or live contracts to proceed uh, to their uh, destination uh, of work. Uh, but that is insofar as workers with active contracts uh, uh, is concerned. But all the rest, uh, they're not. The, the, the ban is uh, in place in this uh, time of uh, uh, COVID pandemic. From Charisa M. Lucy Atienza from Manila Bulletin, Charisa asks, is the DOH considering a mass hiring of healthcare workers instead of just asking them to volunteer? A nurses group claimed that, uh, that volunteer nurses were being made to sign waivers in case they contract the coronavirus. Will you hire emergency healthcare workers with full remuneration, including hazard pay, special uh, special risk allowance, absolutely no quit claim or waiver? Thank you, sir. Yeah, I have no problems uh, with that proposition. Uh, what I know is that uh, the emergency hiring has uh, commenced, and uh, the first uh, eight hundred, uh, more or less. Uh, healthcare workers of different cadres, doctors, nurses, med techs, uh, have already been uh, approved by uh, DBM uh, on a uh, contract of service mode uh, or nature of uh, employment. So kasama po dito, may, alam ko, may 20% premium pa nga sila uh, uh, over and above the uh, uh, regular pay that their counterparts uh, receive. So, meron din silang hazard uh, pay, meron din na uh, kundi ako nagkakamali, uh, meron din silang uh, uh, field health benefits. At, uh, uh, so, hindi na po tawag sa kanila volunteers. Eh. Tawag sa, sa kanila uh, contract of service. At wala po ako, natanong po sa akin yan, eh, uh, kamakailan lang kung bakit meron daw waiver na kailangan na uh, Kung nagkasakit sila ng COVID, ay hindi nila pwedeng uh, 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 habulin ang DOH. Wala po kaming nakikita ng ganun sa contract of uh, service nila. So, pakita lang po sa amin kung saan po nakalagay ito at uh, atin pong uh, uh, tutugunan ito. Okay. <clears throat> Darren, how many more questions do we Mr. have? Chair. Mr. Uh, Chair. Darren? Yes, uh, uh, Chair. Hold, hold on, hold on, uh, minor, Mr. Minority for leader. Dan, how yes, many sir. questions do we have for the for from the media? Uh, we have a uh, we have quite a number, sir. Should I I could narrow okay. it down? Yes, because I understand the rest of them would like to uh, know uh, go and uh, complete their work and their stories. And I think the minority floor leader, as long as we the deputy majority floor leader and the de senior deputy minority floor leader may have some questions. Okay, sir. So Chair, maybe um, at least um, uh, uh, two more questions from the from the media. But um, I'd like to recognize first the minority floor leader, um, Bishop Benny Abante. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just would like to know from the Secretary Duque, no, you said about over and above na matatanggap nila uh, from the regular pay and the hazard pay. Magkano yun? Uh, you estimate magkano matatanggap nila every month? And that is just a contract, no? Ibig sabihin, eh, pagkatapos ng COVID-19, uh, wala na yan. Uh, tama po kayo, pero posible na kapag ka nangailangan tayo ng uh, mga karagdagan uh, healthcare uh, uh, professionals, uh, sila po unahin natin. 
bali lalagay po natin sila, ipaprioritize po natin sila sa kapag ka nagkaroon po tayo ng uh, more permanent positions. So how much all in all yan? Parang anywhere from uh, 40 to 55,000 a month. Oo. Oh. Oh. Now, the, the other question, Mr. Chair, yung uh, deployment ban, meron po yung constitutional question, no? I don't think we could be able to actually ban uh, health workers uh, in going abroad, no? Uh, I think that we should look into that uh, uh, very well. Ang iniwala po ako na per, perhaps this time, hindi na kinakailangan pa nung deployment ban sapagkat hindi na mo talaga makakaalis yung mga yan in reality, no? Or siguro, uh, i-open na lang natin ng magandang trabaho yung mga yan at uh, bigyan natin ng magandang uh, income sila so they could be able to stay. Yun lang, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, maganda mong kahi po yan at uh, mapag-aaralan po natin. Thank you, Secretary. Um, I'd like to recognize our Deputy Majority Floor Leader, Congressman Sharky Palma. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, Majority Leader. Um, two questions po. One to the Secretary uh, and the other one is to General Morales of the PhilHealth. Uh, first, sir, sa kay Secretary Duque, yung mga kanina po kasi offline, we were talking about the uh, may parochial concern regarding the Sabuanga Peninsula testing centers. I'm just trying to echo also the other members of the House, our colleagues, na meron din mga pending na uh, uh, accreditation sa, before the DOH. Like we have in Iligan, we have in Cagayan, the Oro. We have also in, in uh, majority leaders uh, region, uh, sa Leyte, meron din silang pending na application. So I just would like to get a, a uh, categorical statement lang siguro from the Secretary na Sana matulungan kami na ma-fast track lahat ng ano namin ng uh, application so that we will be able to conduct our testing separately. We don't want to 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 further ano eh, to further the uh, backlogs of RITM so baka pwedeng matulungan ninyo kami secretary na ma-set up namin tong testing centers namin. Not just in my district but all over the Philippines who have pending uh, application before your office. Uh, sa kasalukuyan po ito ay uh nasa ibang-ibang stages of accreditation. It's a five-step uh, accreditation process at uh, naniniwala po ako na marami-rami na din po, labing-anim na nga yata yung natapos yung buong proseso, pero may mga iba sa stage four, stage three. Tutulungan po namin ang mga uh, laboratorium ito sa mga nasabing mga hospital para uh, makapagpanuri, uh, uh, makapag-test sila sa lalong madaling panahon. Uh, hindi naman ho ito palagay ko magiging uh, problema lalo na kung ang mga kakulangan ay uh, minor deficiencies lamang. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary. Um, next question po uh, is to General uh, Morales. Sir, regarding the field health uh, ano natin, coverage ng COVID-19 patients, uh, we'd just like to be clarified, no? If, if this coverage of the field health, does it cover all uh, classes of hospitals accredited okay. by the field health? Opo. And and with regard to uh, since you mentioned na it's already covered the entire the entire hospital system classification of hospitals are are covered na. Ang tanong ko na lang po dito is will it uh, are you considering also na ibalik yung full ano uh, full coverage of the uh, ano natin uh, field health coverage natin like the entire amount will be covered by the field health instead of just a portion of it. Uh, yes, you're referring to the post-April 15 coverage. Yes, of yes, yes, yes. We're okay. looking right now at the 18 million indigents. And uh, we are coordinating with the DSWD so that those who are indigents uh, and are afflicted with COVID-19 need not be covered by the case rate. Yes. So they will be fully covered. Uh, they will no longer have to apply for additional coverage. But those who are not indigents will still have to adhere to the case rate. To so the case rates, yes. Yes, and they will still have to apply for additional coverage. And we will have to do our due diligence because our experience in this case, before April uh, 15, there were families who could actually afford to pay a portion of the medical cost. And, uh, well, uh, they didn't have to pay because we were still using that uh, regime. So that is what we're looking for now. Uh, so the indigents 
will be entitled to full coverage. They no longer have to apply. And those who are not in the agency will have to go case to case. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Paul. Majority Leader. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, um, uh, Kong Sharky. Uh, thank you so much, um, uh, Secretary Duque and uh, President Morales. Does um, uh, Co-Chair uh, Janet Garin have any other questions to wrap up um, this question uh, and answer portion? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Majority Leader. Um, okay, General Morales, if he will also be amenable assigning a field health official to discuss with the PWG, because while we load all the, uh, fire, the proposals and the packages mentioned, we are also, we would like to be sure that it is also financially tenable. Because um, sponsoring, I mean, covering all the tests, covering the quarantine centers, these packages can actually give a heavy load on field health. But on the other hand, marami rin po kasing mga sakit. Let's say, you only have 90 sessions of dialysis covered. Mm -hmm. Eh, ang total mm -hmm. session ng pasyente, 120. Mm -hmm. Eh, meron yung uh, peritoneal dialysis first, yung PD first. Yes ma-convert you on mm -hmm. kasi yung mm -hmm. yun, sa buhay. So, if you will have representative then Chairwoman Helen Tan um, together with the other former secretaries can discuss this thoroughly. They having also been former chairs of the PhilHealth Board. Uh, maraming salamat. Last question sa mga secretaries. Sir, nakalimutan ko lang pong tanongin kanina. Para po mawala ang kaba ng lahat ng laboratory testing centers lahat ng regional directors, yung sobrang pagtitipid na baka wala na sa lugar, ilan po ba talaga sa total donated test kits, PCR test kits, how many samples or patients can be tested? Iba-ibang uh, test kits, halimbawa uh, galing po sa China, 4,700 test kits, uh, can actually uh, Test a hundred, hundred thousand, okay, hundred thousand. So para divided by five, divided by uh, para hundred thousand divided by five, para twenty thousand, no, two thousand, two thousand per kit. Sek agawin ko lang. Um, let me rephrase my question. Sa lahat na natanong ng test kits, PCR COVID test kits ng Department of Health, total all the nations. Ang linalabas nyo kasi na report number of kits. So kung i-total mo lahat, alam ko iba-iba. Yung Sunsure, the China kit, um, at nasabi nga, maganda yon WHO. Tagdag lang po natin, Sec, actually it's faster because it involves a process of lysis. Kaya nga napakaganda noon at malaking improvement yon sa laboratories natin. So one kit, 22 patients. Yung BGI, I'm not sure. I think one kit, 96 patients. Yung JAKMA, one kit, 96 patients. So, itotal natin lahat. All donations, number of kits, ilang test, bawat isa. Ilang pong Pilipino ang pwedeng magkaroon ng PCR COVID test with the amount, with the total donated kits that DOH has now. How well, many kits? Uh, we will get back to you, uh, Kog. I don't have the exact figures, but we will do it... Uh, on a uh, per test basis rather than on a uh, per kit basis para talagang mas makita yung universe uh, of the uh, testing. Um, if you will allow us to suggest, what the DOH can actually do is daily, okay, we have a total, for, from the donated kits, we can test, let's say, 10 million Filipinos. And then every week you can give an update of the 10 million Filipinos that can be tested one million has been consumed. Ibig sabihin, hindi magpapanik yung tao kasi alam mo na for the next one to two months, we still have a lot of test kits. I agree with you, uh, Kong. And uh, again, we will get back to you in terms of the available uh, number of uh, tests uh, that uh, RITM and the uh, sub-national laboratories uh, have in their uh, possession. Thank you very much, Sek. Salamat. Thank you so much, uh, Co-Chair Janet. Um, uh, we can go back to um, uh, Darren. I think um, Darren, some of the media have questions for the field health. That's right, uh, Mr. Chair. We have um, a few questions from Ms. Jovi de la Cruz of Business Mirror. 
and address to PhilHealth. Okay. General, what is the current cash position of PhilHealth and for how many years do we expect our funds to last? And what are we doing to boost the fund life of PhilHealth? Thank you, Po. Well, uh, right now, uh, our financial statement, the total uh, assets of uh, PhilHealth is about $221 billion. And uh, the, our current assets uh, is about uh, $70 billion. That's, uh, let's say, cash or easily converted into cash. And then on top of that, we have uh, investment in securities that also can be converted into cash, but would be take a little longer and would there, there would be some um, penalties of about 124 billion. So it's about, our cash position is about a little lower than 200 billion. So uh, we have rolled out a 30 billion uh, anti-COVID war chest to preposition with the, uh, with the, with the hospitals. Uh, we are now experiencing a shortfall in our collection. We anticipated this because uh, everybody is cash strapped. But we hope that uh, before things become critical, we can get over this, uh, this hill and start to recover. But for the year, even before the COVID-19 pandemic, we were already projecting a net loss because uh, we were not given the funding with which we ask to support the universal health care loan. But uh, for the COVID uh, pandemic, I think we are, we are confident that we can support this uh, requirement. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Chair, the other questions are, have been answered, I believe, based Thank on- Thank you so the, much, um, uh, Darren. Yes, I sir. I think it's about time um, we uh, can wrap this up. Because uh, we'd like Take to care. thank you so much. Yes? I just would like to make a, one statement lang ki, ki, uh, Congresswoman uh, Tan, no? I just would like oh, okay. to make... Oh, okay. Uh, my minority floor leader has, uh, uh, has yeah. something to say to our chairman. I am... Uh, uh, to our uh, chairman, no? Uh, I'm in full support of your uh, proposal on the War Council. Uh, I do not know if that is from the resolution or... Uh, you would, uh, it would be the DOH uh, secretary that would uh, compose that, no? Ang pakiusap ko lang, eh, gawin mo na lang labing isa, wag labing dalawa, kasi pag labing dalawa, may hudas nun eh. Labing isa, okay na no, okay yan. But I support that, I support the War Council. Thank you so much, um, uh, our uh, minority floor leader, Bishop Benny Abante, for your support in that, uh, in that statement of yours. To Mr. Chair. Here. Yes. One last lang po, uh, clarification. Sure, yes po, clarification kay um, President Morales. You said earlier, sir, that an indigent patient, was an indigent patient, despite on the uh, case rates po na take effect after April 14, uh, the field health will still uh, pay full cost of hospitalization. Uh, does it cover yung hospitalization in the private hospital, let's say, severe uh, case to an um, indigent patient and admitted in a private hospital. Will you cover it? Yes, ma'am. But we're looking at the no-balance billing sa ward accommodations. Yes. Sir, sir, kasi ang kung severe po, most likely nasa ICU you, po yan, indigent. We will cover that. Okay, thank you, sir, for that. Thank you Madam so much, Chair. Mr. Chair. Madam Chair, thank you so much for that. And uh, to um, uh, the President um, uh, of the Field Health uh, President Morales, maraming maraming salamat. As you know, uh, Madam Chair, and to all, we started this uh, battle together as early as uh, January 27, when the speaker uh, agreed to call for a question hour and we invited Secretary Duque to the first question hour of the 18th Congress. And there, that is where he started to outline the uh, parameters moving forward if and when the COVID virus would hit. So nakikita po natin lahat na nakakaisa talaga ang House of Representatives at kasama ng mga executive, particularly with the DOH, the attached agency to the field health. Andito po tayo ngayon, kaya we are very, very blessed na andito yung mga magaling na mga eksperto, our former secretaries of health, 
uh, kagaya ng mga top uh, experts like uh, uh, Dr. Susie Mercado, Dr. Willie Ong, and all of our legislators. Magkakaisa na tayo dito. Uh, wag lang batikos, dapat uh, magtutulungan tayo dito kasi itong uh, battle, this battle against COVID can be won. Mabigat talaga ang uh, itong labanan pero kakayanan po natin basta magkakaisa na lang tayo. At lahat dapat uh, magkaroon ng pag-asa kasi nakikita yung bayan ay nakakaisa under the leadership of President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. His political resolve, whose political will is so timely uh, because uh, with him at the helm of uh, the country's uh, fight against this uh, COVID, uh, we are sure that we will win. Uh, but let us uh, do it in a quicker, more efficient fashion by working together, working hand in hand. So let's help each other. Magtutulong na lang tayo at mangyayari talaga to. Nananara tayo, mawawagi talaga tayo. But there's still a lot of work to be done and speed is of the essence. Kaya, uh, miski tumagal itong uh, ating session, I think it was very productive and very fruitful. Almost uh, four and a half hours na tayo nag-uugnayan tayo dito with our very, very good uh, supportive friends in the media, our stakeholders, para makita ng buong Pilipinas na nakakaisa talaga ang gobyerno para sa ating kapong mga Pilipino. With that, I'd like to um, uh, end uh, and I'd like to give a uh, speaker uh, the last uh, 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 message uh, to all. Speaker? Thank you very much at sa lahat ng ating mga kababayan. Uh, isang katawan lang po tayo, kaya magkaisa po tayo. And Majority Leader, thank you very much for your patience, for your research, for putting all of the uh, resource persons together. Uh, yung experience mo talaga sa paghandle ng crisis sa Yolanda uh, is really paying off during this crisis. At sa lahat ng mga kapatid natin sa media, thank you for your patience. God bless you po. I'll see you in the next hearing. Nandiyan, naka-mute po ang mic. Speaker, maraming maraming salamat. We'd like to thank all our uh, special guests, uh, Secretary uh, Duque, Secretary um, uh, well, uh, President um, uh, Morales, uh, our uh, Secretaries of Health, uh, our uh, special guests from uh, the medical profession, particularly Dr. Susi Mercado, Dr. Willie Ong, and our legislators, and more particularly now, our media practitioners who have been a great help in bringing out and threshing out the issues. Maraming maraming pong salamat. This will be, um, uh, a there will be a continuation of these um, uh, technical working groups alongside with the main uh, Defeat COVID uh, committee. Abangan uh, yung sunod na ating hearings. This will be uh, all uh, done in the public uh, for full transparency. And uh, we hope and pray that uh, we uh, win this war sooner than later. Maraming maraming salamat sa lahat. Uh, to God be the glory. Maraming maraming salamat. We will now adjourn the uh, technical working group and we will see each other soon. Thank you, Majo. Thank you, Majo. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Salamat, salamat. God bless us all.